Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, everybody, to another chapter of A Court of Wings and Ruin, written by Sarah J. Moss, and read by yours truly, Free Water, with the exclamation point for the added emphasis. Y'all already know. So what, what happened last time? Boy, we got told Elaine was a seer. We got told, because... All this stuff that she's just been rap rapping on about actually came true. What was it? The one with the twin ravens? Um, someone, <clears throat> something about some princess or queen or whatever. Yeah, the queen with the feathers of flame. Uh, and then those twin ravens. They were like, Ezreal's like, oh my gosh. You can see the future, but you can't really, you can't really tell us what the heck is actually happening though. So that once she's saying stuff, they got to figure out what the heck she even means at the same time so they know she knows something. But she doesn't know what she knows yet. So let's see what she, she knows and what we know that she knows. <laughs> In chapter 33. Seer. The word clanged through me. She'd known. She'd warned Nesta about the ravens. And in the chaos of the attack... That little realization had slipped from me. It slipped from me as reality, and dreams slipped and entwined for Elaine. Seer. Elaine turned to Moore, who was now gaping at my sister from her spot beside her on the couch. Is that what it is? And the words, the tone, they were so normal sounding that my chest tightened. Moore's gaze darted across my sister's face, as if weighing the words. The question, the truth, or lie within. Moore at last blinked, mouth parting, like that magic of hers had at last solved some puzzle. Slowly, clearly, she nodded. Lucian silently slid into one of the chairs before the window, that metal eye whirring as it roved over my sister. It made sense, I supposed, that Azrael alone had listened to her. The male who heard things, others could not. Perhaps he too, had suffered as Elaine, had before he understood what gift he possessed. He asked Elaine, There's another queen? Elaine squinted, as if the question required some inner clarification, some path, into looking the right way at whatever had addled and plagued her. Yes. The sixth queen, Moore breathed. The queen, the golden one said, was it ill? She said not to trust the other queens because of it, I added. And as soon as the words left my mouth, it was like stepping back from a painting to see the entire picture. Up close, the words had been muddled and messy, but from a distance. You stole from the cauldron, I said to Nesta, who seemed ready to jump between all of us and Elaine. But what if the cauldron gave something to Elaine? Nesta's face drained of color. What? Equally ashen, Lucian seemed inclined to echo Nesta's hoarse question. But Azriel nodded. He knew, he said to Elaine, about the young queen turning into a crone. Elaine blinked and blinked, eyes clearing again, as if the understanding, our understanding, it freed her from whatever murky realm she'd been in. Six queen is alive? Azriel asked. Calm and steady, the voice of the High Lord Spymaster, who had broken enemies and charmed allies. Elaine cocked her head, as if listening to some inner voice. Yes. Lucian just stared and stared at my sister, as if he'd never seen her before. I whipped my face to rise. Potential ally? I don't know, he answered. If the others cursed her. What sort of curse? My maid had asked before he'd even finished speaking to me. Elaine shifted her face toward him, another blink. They sold her to... to some darkness. To some... sorcerer land. She shook her head. I can never see him. But he says there's an onyx box that he possesses, more vital than anything. Save for them, the girls. He keeps other girls. Others, like her, but she... by day... 
She is one form, by night, human again. A bird of burning feathers, I said. Firebird by day, Ryze mused. Woman by night. So she's held captive by this sorcerer lord. Elaine shook her head. I, I don't know. I hear her, her screaming with rage. Utter rage. She shuddered. Moore leaned forward. Do you know why the other queens cursed her? Sold her to him. Elaine studied the table. No, no. That is all mist and shadow. Rise blew out her breath. Can you sense where she is? There is a lake. Deep in, in the continent, I think. Hidden amongst mountains and ancient forests. Elaine's throat bobbed. He keeps them all at the lake. Other women like her? Yes and no. Their feathers are white as snow. They glide across the water while she rages through the skies above it. Moore said to Rise, What information do we have on this six queen? Little, Azrael answered for him. We know little. Young, somewhere in her mid-twenties. Scythia lies along the wall to the east. Smallest amongst the human queen's realms, but rich in trade and arms. She goes by Vasa, but I never got a full report with her full name. Rise considered. She must have posed a considerable threat to the queens if they turned on her. And considering their agenda. If we can find Vasa, I cut in, she could be vital in convincing the human forces to fight and giving us an ally on the continent. If we can find her, Cassie encountered, stepping up to Azrael's side, his wings flaring slightly. It could take months, not to mention facing the male who holds her captive could be harder than expected. We can't afford all those potential risks, or the time it'd take. We should focus on the meeting with the other High Lords first. But we could stand to gain much, Moore said. Perhaps she has an army. Perhaps she does. Cassian cut her off. But if she's cursed, who will lead it? And if her kingdom's so far away, they have to travel the mortal way, too. You remember how slowly they moved, how quickly they died. It's worth a try, Moore sniped. You're needed here, Cassian said. Azrael looked inclined to agree, even as he kept quiet. I need you on the battlefield, not traipsing through the continent. The human half of it. If those queens have rallied armies to offer Highburn, they're no doubt standing between you and Queen Vasa. You don't give my orders. No, but I do, Rice said. Don't give me that look. He's right. We need you here, Moore. Scythia, Moore said, shaking her head. I remember them. They're horse people. A mounted cavalry could travel far faster. No. Sheer will blazed in Rise's eyes. The order was final. But more tried again. There is a reason why Elaine is seeing these things. She was right about the other queen turning old. About the raven's attack. Why is she being sent this image? Why is she hearing this queen? It must be vital. If we ignore it, perhaps we'll deserve to fail. Silence. I surveyed them all. Vital. Each of them was vital here, but me sucked in a breath. I'll go. Lucian was staring at Elaine as he spoke. We all looked at him. Lucian shifted his fo focus to rise, to me. I'll go, he repeated, rising to his feet, to find this six queen. Moore opened and shut her mouth. What makes you think you can find her? Rise asked. Not rudely, but... From a commander's perspective. Sizing up the skills Lucian offered against the risks, the potential benefits. This eye. Lucian gestured to the metal contraption. He can see things that others can't. Spells. Glamours. Perhaps it can help me find her. Break her curse. He glanced at Elaine, who was again studying her lap. I'm not needed here. I'll fight if you need me to, but... He offered me a grim smile. I do not belong in the Autumn Court, and I'm willing to bet I'm no longer welcome at huh, the Spring Court. Home, 
he had almost said. But I cannot sit here and do nothing. Those queens with their armies, there's a great threat in that regard too. So use me. Send me. I will find Vasa, see if she can bring help. You will be going into human territory, Rise warned. I can't spare a force to guard you. I don't need one. I travel faster on my own. His chin lifted. I'll find her. And if there's an army to bring back, or at least some way for her own story to sway the human forces, I'll find a way to do that too. My friends glanced at each other. Moore said, It will be very dangerous. A half-smile curved Lucian's mouth. Good. It'd be boring otherwise. Only Cassian returned the grin. I'll load you up with some Illyrian steel. Elaine now watched Lucian warily, blinking every now and then. She revealed no hint of whatever she might be seeing. Sensing. None. Rise pushed off the archway. I'll winnow you as close as we can get, to wherever you need to begin your hunt. Lucian had indeed been studying all those maps lately. Perhaps at the quiet behest of whatever force had guided us all. My mate added, thank you. Lucian shrugged, and it was that gesture alone that made me say at last, are you sure? He only glanced at Elaine, whose face was again a calm void while she traced the finger over the embroidery on the couch cushions. Yes, let me help in whatever way I can. Even Nesta seemed relatively concerned. Not for him, no doubt, but the fact that if he were hurt or killed, what would it do to Elaine? The severing of the mating bond. I shut out the thought of what it'd do to me. I asked Lucian, When do you want to leave? Tomorrow. I hadn't heard him sound so assertive in a long time. I'll prepare for the rest of today. Leave after breakfast tomorrow morning. He added to rise. If that works for you. My mate, my mate waved an idle hand. For what you're about to do, Lucian, we'll make it work. Silence fell once more. If he could find that missing queen and perhaps bring back some sort of human army, or at least sway the mortal forces from Highburn's thrall. If I could find a way to get the carver to fight for us that did not involve using that terrible mirror, would it be enough? The meeting with the High Lords. It seemed would decide that. Rise jerked his chin at Azrael, who took it as an order to vanish, to no doubt check in on Amran. Find out if Kier and his Darkbringers had any attacks. My mate ordered Kmor and Cassian, who nodded and left as well. Alone with my sisters and Lucian, Rise and I caught Nesta's eye. And for once, my sister rose to her feet and came toward us, the three of us not so subtly heading upstairs leaving Lucian and Elaine alone. It was an effort not to linger atop the landing, to listen to what was said, if anything was said at all. But I made myself take Ryza's hand, flinching at the blood still caked on his skin, and led him to our bathing room. Nesta's bedroom door clicked shut down the hall. Ryza wordlessly watched me as I turned on the bathtub faucet and grabbed the washcloth from the chest against the wall. I took up a seat at the edge of the tub, testing the water temperature against my wrist, and patted the porcelain rim beside me. Sit. He obeyed, his head drooping as he sat. I took one of his hands, guided it to the gurgling stream of water, and held it beneath. Red flowed off this skin, eddying in the water beneath. I plucked up the cloth and scrubbed gently, more blood flaking off, water splashing onto the still immaculate sleeves of his jacket. Why not shield your hands? I wanted to feel it. Their lives ending beneath my fingers. Cold, flat words. I scrubbed at his nails. The blood wedged into the cracks where it met his skin. The arcs beneath. Why is it different this time? Different from the Ator's ambush. Highburn's attack in the woods. The attack on Valaris. All of it. I'd seen him in a rage before, but never, never so detached. As if morality and kindness were things that lurked on a surface far, far above the frozen depths he'd plunged into. I turned his palm into the spray, getting at the space between his fingers. What is the point of it? He said. 
of all this power, if I can't protect those who are most vulnerable in my city, if I can't detect an incoming attack. Even Azrael didn't learn of it. The king used an archaic spell and walked in the front door. If I can't... Rai shook his head. And I lowered his now clean hand and reached for the other. More blood stained the water. If I can't protect them here, how can... His throat bobbed. I lifted his chin with a hand. Icy rage had slipped into something a bit shattered and aching. Those priestesses have endured enough. I failed them today. That library it will no longer feel safe to them. The one place they've had to themselves, where they knew they were protected. Pyburn took that away today. And from him, he had gone to that library for his own need for healing, for safety. He said, Perhaps it's punishment for taking a Valaris for more, and granting cure access here. You can't think like that. It won't end well. I finished washing his other hand, rinsed the cloth, then began swiping it along his neck, his temples. Soothing, warm presses, not to clean, but to relax. I'm not angry about the bargain, he said, closing his eyes as I swiped the cloth over his brow. In case you were worried, I wasn't. Rise opened his eyes, as if he could hear the smile in my voice, and studied me while I chucked the cloth into the tub with a wet slap and turned off the faucet. He was still studying me when I took his face in my damp hands. What happened today was not your fault, I said, the words filling the sun-drenched bathing room. None of it. It all lies on Hybern, and when we face the king again, we will remember these attacks, these injuries to our people. We forgot Amarantha's spellbook to our own loss, but we have a book of our own, hopefully with the spell we need. And for now, for now, we will prepare and we will face the consequences. For now, we move ahead. He turned his head to kiss my palm. Remind me to give you a salary raise. I choked on a cough. For what? For the Sage Council and the other vital services you provide me. He winked. I laughed in earnest and squeezed his face as I pressed a swift kiss to his mouth. Shameless flirt. The warmth returned to his eyes at last, so I reached for an ivory towel and bundled his hands, now clean and warm, into the folds of soft fabric. And that, my friends, was the end of chapter 33. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Fire it and say like, "Oh yeah, we all missed out because Elaine directly told us what was happening." So technically, they all knew about Highburn coming to attack. They just didn't think about it. You don't. You know, you could have all. You could have all the spells in the world, all the power, but if you aren't, if you aren't using it with your brain, then uh, you know, you're you're gonna you're gonna get some. Uh, misses like that and you're just gonna have to get over it and i get i get where rise is coming from i i totally agree with a lot of that mentality is like e even at work and stuff like that maybe you miss something even if it's not like detrimental or something like that and i will i will just sit there and like hound on myself for a while you get into a little um a little cycle or whatever it's like you hit you rag on yourself which makes you feel like crap and because you feel like crap it makes you rag on yourself more and it was good that Fyro was there to kind of like snap him out of that. Uh, we all we all could even if it's not like a relationship like that, like uh, like a relationshipy relationship, even a friendship relationship. It's good to help sometimes break out of that or have people there to help break you out of that. Because uh, I know I know I've been there. I know Lady Wad has been there. I know I know many of us have probably been there. So uh, <laughs> otherwise, you know. Just keep, just keep on enjoying. I appreciate everyone's kind words, kind comments, um, and seeing that a lot of people are really getting into the series, even if it's, even if they've just jumped in now or if they've been back and forth and stuff like that. So it's, it's been really awesome reading this for y'all. Let, let, yeah, enough sappy stuff. <laughs> enough sappy stuff. Y'all stay, y'all stay beautiful, stay hydrated, and we will see you in the next chapter. Bye.